October 28th, 2021 marks the 22nd annual Lights On After School, the nationwide celebration of after school programs. In a typical year, 1 million Americans come together at more than 8,000 Lights On After School events across the nation. Like after school programs, lights on after school celebrations can be in all shapes and sizes and don't have to be huge to be effective. Whether this is your first lights on after school or your 22nd, this webinar will help you to inspire <clears throat> to get the most out of your celebration. I'm excited to introduce Tiana Glenn, project associate from the After School Alliance, who can share more about lights on after school and how easy it is to participate. Hi everyone, my name is Tiana Glenn and I'm with that school alliance. I'm here to talk to you all about lights on after school. So today's presentation is gonna to be twofold. One, we will give a, a, a brief overview of why advocating for after school is so crucial when it comes to the current policy environment. And then secondly, We'll go into the basics of planning a successful Lights On After School event and discuss some strategies to engage policymakers and maximize the impact of your celebration. So what exactly is Lights On After School? Lights On After School is a chance for after school programs to celebrate and showcase exactly what they do every day and make the case that they're, make the case to their community, to parents, to policymakers, to even the media, that after school programs are essential for students and their families. It's also an opportunity to highlight the changing face of what after school really looks like. Um, so you are providing engaging hands-on enrichment opportunities for your kids. And that is a way to enhance and build upon school time learning in really unique ways. Some people may already be aware of what you do, but others may not. So that's why hosting a Lights On After School event is a great opportunity to educate your community and create brand new advocates. Next slide. Lights on After School allows you to bring attention to the need for more after school programs and resources in your community. And it gives you the freedom to create an event that does this in a way that you feel works best for your area and your program. So partners of Lights on After School include 4-H After School, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, and 21st Century Community Learning Center programs. Lights on After School events generate thousands of newspaper, radio, TV stories across the country every year and involve the hundreds of local leaders from mayors and superintendents to governors and members of Congress. So if you haven't already, put in the chat, let us know how long you've been a part of Lights On After School, whether that's this is your first year, second year, fifth year, let us know in the chat how long you've been a part of Lights On After School. Awesome, I see first year, I see fourth year, third year, great, we're glad to have you here. So the point of hosting a Lights On event is to build long-term support for your program and for similar programs in your community and your state. So how can Lights On help sustain and promote your program? Well, as a previous program director, I know from experience that Lights On can definitely make a difference in your program. The program that I managed was a new program. And overall, our goal was just to create awareness about a program. <laughs> we just wanted folks to know that we were here and we were here to serve uh, the youth. So we followed the helpful steps from the After School Alliance, which I will go over in just a second, how to do so, um, to make our Lights On event successful. The steps included registering our event, having our students work on Lights On art, sharing on social media, and opening our program to stakeholders in the area for a site visit. So one year in particular, during the opening of a second site, we had a ribbon cutting event where we were able to have the city's mayor, we had an NBA player, and other prominent community members come to recognize our program for Lights On. And thanks to the news sources we had at that event, we were actually able to increase our enrollment to where we had a wait list for all the grades that we served. And so like even now, no longer being a program director, I share the resources of Lights On at the school and I support the work of other organizations. Um, so that way we can make sure we're continuing to shine a light on to the programs. So the work that you know I've done and the work that I try to continue to do within my community has even led to a proclamation of Lights On After School Day from the governor of my state. So consider how Lights On can help sustain and promote your program. Plan your event so that it can meet your current goals. That's so important. Whether that's getting more parents to know about your program, educating local policymakers, teachers, and school leaders about what you do, and involving local businesses, recognizing a staff leader, or promoting a particular initiative. Next slide. So as we know, Lights On will look different this year. 
Um, we will have health protocols to follow and we might not want to gather in large groups, but it's still important to make sure that you take this moment to celebrate what you've done and what you continue to do. After school programs have done so much to support children and families and we need to showcase that work. <laughs> we encourage you to take a moment to celebrate yourself in the work that you do. The pandemic has forced us to uh, be creative and innovate and Lights On is no exception. Last year, programs celebrated in so many different ways, from virtual showcases to outdoor art walks to lighting up bridges and parks. We held nationwide virtual events that were attended by thousands of youth, parents, programs, and leaders. We even had astronauts from NASA, the Empire State Building was lit, and an American Idol winner actually celebrated with us, which was pretty awesome. It was definitely an inspiration to see. Next slide. So now, you know, lights on after school events, they don't have to be difficult to plan or expensive in order to be effective. So now I'm gonna go over the three easy steps for creating a great lights on after school event. Next slide. So the first one is just to register your event. And you can do this by signing up online by visiting our website, three to six.co backslash register. Next slide. So once you register your event, prepare your mail and inbox to receive a whole bunch of free resources that will include email planning tips, updates every week, 10 free posters to help you promote your event locally, raffle and prize giveaways every week among our registered programs for event materials leading up to Lights On. Your event will be added to our website for media and your community to see, and your event will be, account, will be counted in our national total. So registering with us is the only way we will know that you're holding an event. And it's the only way you'll be able to receive these free resources. So that's why this is super important to make sure you do this step. Next slide. Step two, plan your event. Next slide. We've learned from last year and we've updated our kit to include ideas for in-person or virtual events. So as well as as, as a way to celebrate and to call attention to your after school without even having an event. So you have these two options. Next slide. So visit our website to find our event planning kit that includes step-by-step -step information on how to start planning a successful lights on at the school event. So in our kit, it includes sample materials like invitations and activities, graphics and logos to, design, uh, to download, timelines and checklists, which is actually the most used resource that we have. Event ideas, case studies, media materials that you can edit to make it specific to your after-school program. We have handouts and talking points to help share the after-school story with your community. And most importantly, we have an entire section on engaging the media and policymakers. Next slide. So think beyond events. You can even bring lights on into your community. So you can fill your window with student create a light bulb artwork like I spoke about earlier. That's something I did when I was a program director. Or you can get creative with art installations in public spaces, car parades, hanging posters in town or turning into yard signs. So you can really make this what you want. Next slide. You can also visit our website for tips on getting something lit up in your community. And it's a great way to engage your business in your community and your leaders. So businesses may light up their buildings. As you can see here in New York City, we have the Empire State Building lit up in blue and yellow. You can have signs put up on different buildings. You can contact your stadiums, your state capitals, your town halls, bridges and parks. You can contact whoever it, it takes to make sure that lights on is lit up in your area. Next slide. And just like I mentioned before, you can ask for a lights on proclamation. So did you know that every year, nearly every governor issues a proclamation for lights on? So your mayor, city council, or county leaders can do so too. So we have a template in our event planning kit for you to look at. Most of the leaders, like I said, will say yes. So make sure you share your proclamation at your event or on social media or invite your policymaker to read it aloud. Next slide. Step three, which is my favorite step, celebrate. After the hard work of planning that you've been doing, enjoy that moment. Celebrate your accomplishments and all you've done to support your youth and families. And have some fun with your lights on. It's been a challenging year. It's been a challenging year. <laughs> and we hope that this moment, you know, you use it to shine with your lights on because it's a moment to really reflect on the amazing field that we are all a part of. 
So now I'm gonna pass it over to Johanna and we're gonna hear about her experience with Light Sign After School. Thank you, uh, Tiana, very nice. And I definitely concur with the proclamation. We do that every year, so great suggestion. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we do here in Greenville, Texas. I'm a 21st Century Community Learning Center program, but I've also run programs privately and for other nonprofits for church groups. So I've had kind of a plethora of experiences. Um, these pictures that you see in front of you, these are some of our um, sign boards that we use during our rally on the square outside. And also uh, to the right is a, um, uh, uh, a board from our high school. So from our high school open house. Okay, we can advance this slide. So lights on, um, I kind of wrote this up because this is kind of what we believe here in Greenville that it's an inspiring positive celebration of light. Um, we set aside a uh, celebration of the field. We show our progress through data, through lots of products, through demonstrations, passion. And uh, we wanna show our students, families and community what we bring to the table. And uh, on the left is a picture of one of our open house tables. And you can see on there, we've included some things from the floor challenge, which is a national free event, which you can get involved with and showcase that at your lights on. And then on the right-hand side, we typically have our rally on the square next to the courthouse, but you always need to be prepared for anything. And this, uh, we had a rain uh, date one year and we pulled it inside under our farmer's market and, it, and the show went on. So always have a little bit of a contingency plan when you plan your events, okay? And this is where we typically have our lights on uh, celebrations. We've been doing this for 10 years. And you can see in Texas, we have these really beautiful uh, squares in the middle of town. And they're just a wonderful venue and a wonderful place to have a lights on celebration. We always have our speakers at the top of the squares. We have our children's perform, uh, our children perform. And um, it just makes a really nice spot to showcase with the cars going around and the signboards and the, the uh, uh, automobiles honking. It just, uh, it's very, very um, high energy. Okay. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the evolution of an event. This is kind of how we did, um, how we've gotten to the spot where we are now. Year one, we started with an open house. And then year two, we got a little fancier with our open houses with a theme or contest. And then we had a simple rally. We didn't have it on the courthouse stairs the first year. We had it at another venue in, in the middle of the city though. Then year three, we started with themed open houses. So we always have the lights on theme, but we might focus on lights on electrical engineering or lights on in, um, in robotics and, and include different types of things with that. Um, what uh, you wanna go simple the very first year of, of your open house, just a simple speech, have your students, parents, community members in attendance. Um, year four, again, you've got your, your open house, um, bring in your political figures if you haven't done so uh, before then, bring in your parents, your district personnel, your community members, your organizations, and have lots of speeches and demonstrations. Don't just go with the speeches. Uh, the money maker is having those kids out there showing all those amazing things that you do in your program. For instance, we have our ROTC, we have our cheer squad, our dance squad. We have students writing poetry and reciting it, making speeches, our future uh, political leaders, and also art exhibits right there outside on the square. And then year five, what we did, what we started doing about year five was we added Saturday events to uh, our lights on demonstration so that we can kind of continue the fun after the week of lights on. This year, we're going to do um, three Saturday events and we're gonna sandwich the lights on activity right in the middle of those, um, of those events. So year one, here's a very simple open house. You can see we've used the materials in the toolkit. We did go ahead and we made a, a nice big sign for the entrance and the colors of the school just happened to complement the whole event rather well. So just, you know, if this is your first year doing it, just, you know, take it slow, 
and and just kind of follow the tool toolkit and do what you're comfortable with. Then year two, you might want to get a little fancier. Uh, year two, we started doing themes. You can see we have our, our kids made uh, flashlights and we've got some other um, things from some of our STEM classes there. Uh, on the right, you can see where we've done a little bit of a fall theme one year. So um, kind of uh, let your imaginations run wild. We also have at each one of our campuses, we have a table where we greet parents. And so we have a contest during Lights On to see who can do the best uh, decoration of their Lights On table. And then we award a trophy to the campus that really wows us. So year three, you really want to get your rally out there and make it kind of a big deal. These are some of the pictures of our kids that I performed at our rallies. For a couple of years, we actually had a nice ballet group. We had a wonderful teacher teaching the kids Russian ballet, which was amazing. And we always have a couple of cheer squads and dance squads. The students really, really like those. And our high school appreciates uh, us kind of training the, the uh, boys and girls up at a young age for cheerleading. And then year four, you can uh, boof up your rally even more, get your political speakers in there. We have a tradition of making a lights on banner every year and it's so fun. If you haven't done it, I would say consider it. It's really simple. We choose one campus to make a banner every year and then we take it around to all the campuses. We take photos with um, our political figures in town, our legislators. We take pictures with our administrators, our parents and our community members. And it's just really super fun. And finally, um, when you do your rally, be reverent of your community culture. Um, in Greenville, Texas, it's East Texas. So they're very um, focused on our military uh, folks. So we always have our ROTC. And then we also have our kids out there performing. Our parents wanna see those happy smiles of their students and, and some live action. So do a combination, but definitely honor your community when you, get, when you go along with us. And there is our resident artist on the left-hand side. And during our rally, she just sits there and she paints pictures of the rally. And also on the sidelines, we sometimes have demonstrations uh, like you see with our uh, drone on the right-hand side. We didn't go too high because we have L3, which is a military company nearby, and, but we kept it pretty low. And uh, the parents and the kids really enjoyed seeing the drone. And definitely appeal to all the census. So we have written boards. Uh, those are usually at our open house, but we also have our signage on the square so people can see what we're talking about and kind of see what we're doing. Uh, we Again, we go for the patriotic uh, angle in Greenville because a lot of our older citizens really honor that as well as the young, younger citizens, but it's, it's a big part of our community. And then we had our stomp group, which appeals to our younger crowd and some of our other young families. So we try to really think about what's going to be very inclusive to all our people and also be global. So you wanna to get to your legislators involved and, and make sure that you touch base with your various um, organizations nationwide. All right. Finally, Saturday celebrations. This year we're doing um, lights, flight, and fright. That's what we call it on Saturdays. And this is gonna be a Harry Potter extravaganza. And we will have Hogwarts. We'll have um, the Mandrake roots. We've got the candy store. It's just gonna be an amazing um, celebration of everything Harry Potter uh, that goes along with our lights, flights, and fright celebration. And so the kids will be able to come in and do a, um, an activity with that with their parents. And that's all part of our uh, Lights On celebration as well. So pro tips, start small, add a little bit each year, involve all of your students, family, school district. Make sure if you are the project leader to present current data of your specific program and leave the more generalized um, data about um, nationwide after school statistics to your community and local folks. You can give them a little cheat sheet and they will represent that very, very well. 
but as program leader, talk about specifically what your program has done for the students and the families in your community. And just be creative, imaginative, and think outside of that box. And most important of all, have fun with it. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mark. So Mark, you are on. Well, um, so uh, we've all gotten our money's worth already, right? Uh, that was awesome. Tiana, Johanna, thank you so much. Um, I probably could take all these ideas right now and just run. But we have a few more we want to share with you guys. And I am so excited for the opportunity to share with you. Um, before becoming a part of the Missouri After School Network, I was a program director of a 21st century community learning center program. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I wanted to make sure of that I did right away as I came into this field is take advantage of all the tips that were coming from the professionals. And I love the fact that there are a lot of you who are doing your first lights on event. I think the big key for me is exactly what Johanna said, and that is just start somewhere. Whatever you do this year will be just right for your community. So when I was a program director, we did, one of the things I tried to do is make sure that I try to be as in, you know, kind of as inclusive as possible and bring the community together. And um, so, and if you want to put this, the slide up, this will kind of give an indication of some of the things that we did at Tiger Academy um, in Hollister, Missouri. One thing that I finally got to get done, we finally got accomplished in Branson, Missouri, is you see that, you see that uh, Ferris wheel in the middle. That's the old um, Navy Pier Ferris wheel that was in Chicago that replaced it with a new uh, Ferris wheel. The old one is now in Branson, Missouri, and I've been trying to get that Ferris wheel lit up. Now, it's not the light bulb guy, but it's pretty close. You see some yellow and blue in there, right? So that's pretty cool. So light up the landmark is a, is a big key. One of the things that I think Johanna brought to the fore is in terms of trying to involve your entire program. So in this slide are a lot of things that the students did. We were a K, we had a K-12 uh, emphasis on college and career readiness. And, and so what we wanna do is showcase what the students were doing at our three sites, our elementary, middle, and high school site. Now there's a picture in there in the bottom corner and it's a, it looks it's just a bowl with red stuff in it. I, I thought, you know, I don't know if I want to put this in there or not, but the reason I have that in there is that was our middle school kitchen capers club, and they made homemade salsa, and they wanted to serve it that night of our lights on celebration. So that was one of those things that we wanted to make sure. So we tried to um, include everything that our students were doing. There in the middle, that Make Futures Bright, that actually was a full wall mural that our high school um, art club did. Um, and they did that for lights on that year. And then we put it on the wall behind the um, be behind our speakers and what we did for our program. Another thing that I, I think is really key in this is again, starting small, but just build on what's important for you. But if you want to involve your community, find ways that you can bring the community to you. One of those things is I took advantage when I was a program director that the Missouri After School Network was doing their celebration of after school and they would recognize a community partner um, and a professional of the year. And so I nominated my community partners. I had great community partners in my community that were helping provide cool programming within uh, my community. And so what I did is I took that and I put it and I brought it into the local context, not just having them recognized at the state level, but bringing them as a part of my Lights On event and then recognizing the community partner of the year at our Lights On event. That way, those folks could also bring people into the event. And it gave us a great way of making that connection to the community. So bring your, your local um, municipality policymakers, your, your city manager, your mayor, city council, bring them there along with that community partner. So you bring them into the mix. Another thing that I think many communities can take advantage of, we talk about media presence. One of the things that I realized, I was serving in a more rural uh, community, but radio is still, local radio is still a big part of the community. So what I did is I took some of my dollars and I actually purchased a remote, a two hour remote for the event. And then we would have a local radio personality broadcasting live. We had four cut-ins. We would have interviews of our local policymakers, our school administrators, um, as well as we had some other uh, legislative uh, people that were there and just gave us a chance to, to let people know what was happening live at that, you know, at that moment. Right now, this event is being broadcast on Facebook Live. That's another way in which you can let, get a lot of eyes on what is happening 
in your event. I think the real key for me was as I was doing this, first of all, involving my entire team at all three of my sites, and then also getting those, that student involvement, making sure we highlight what the students are doing and, and, and then allowing them to be the ones that showcase that. So what we did is we had little student uh, um, um, ambassadors, so to speak, where they would greet the people at the door, take them around, show them the, the various displays, give them a tour of our site, those kinds of things. Whenever the students are involved in something like this, if you're doing it on site at your location, whether it's a school site or your community-based organization site, whatever that might be, utilize those students in that. Um, go back to the site for just a moment. I want to call one more, just attention to that before I introduce my, my special guest that's with me. Um, and that is, I have a, another program director with me from Missouri. I can't wait to introduce you. So I want to just make sure, I want to call attention to the fact that that banner down there that says Ask After School for All, we did that and we put on the logos. One of the things we want to do is make sure we, we let people know who's involved in this. And so, I, as Johanna said, take advantage of the, of the, the um, materials that are being that are being offered to you by the After School Alliance, as well as as you see the I support Missouri lights on that came from um, that came from our state network. If your state network is offering things, take advantage of those as well. Well, I'm really excited because um, I have with me today another program director from our state. We are very very fortunate to have as all of your states would probably say so, great, great um, programs. And I want to have Aaron Malone. Aaron is the Vice President of Education for Mission St. Louis Beyond School Program in St. Louis. And what's really cool is that um, they, in, in the midst of a pandemic, they decided to go from two sites to five sites this year in, uh, in St. Louis. And so, we are so excited to have Aaron share with you. So Aaron, I was so grateful to hear what you did in terms of the virtual space last year and how you built that out. Share some more ideas for the folks that are here today. Great, so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me and I'm excited to talk to you all about Lights On After School and give you the T for Lights On After School. I am not very cool, but I do know that that means something. And I think it means like giving you the information. So you can tell, you can say that to your students and they'll think you're cool, maybe. I don't know. Um, so what I wanted to start talking about is just the planning beforehand. Um, before you uh, get to lights on after school, you need to take the time to plan. And um, as I think everybody here has mentioned, in your planning, you really wanna make sure that you're starting early and including your team, your stakeholders, your school administration, um, even your students. If you have uh, like a student leadership panel, get their uh, thoughts on ways that you can celebrate um, after school and your program and promote your program. So get their voice in, in, um, in your planning so that you have some great ways and ways to engage your families and students and even uh, other stakeholders in your district. Next slide. Um, the other thing that you should do while you're planning is really consider uh, the barriers to participation. What are the things that could keep your families from being able to participate? And and last year, obviously, one of the major major barriers to participation was COVID. Other things could be transportation, um, work obligations that families have. Um, other other events and, and going on in the district might be something else that you're having to think through. So think about those barriers and then think of some creative ways in your planning that you can work to alleviate those barrier, barriers and give your families and other stakeholders as many opportunities and entry points into your events or activities as possible. So um, that could be anything from, you know, if, if the budget allows providing transportation, that could be something even um, that would align with your pickup time. So if your families are coming to pick up, maybe you have a drive-through event. We had somebody in Missouri talk about that the other day that they had a really great drive-through event because their families we're coming to pick up anyway. So what are, you know, in that, in that time that families are coming to pick up their students, what ways can we um, have a little touch point of a, of a celebration during that time? Um, if you drop off students, maybe you could have a little something there with, you know, a, a thankful Thursday or something where you give families a little treat and, and take just a minute to celebrate lights on after school with them. Um, also, uh, one other thing that, that um, and, and I'll go into talking about kind of what we did last year to try to 
alleviate some of those barriers barriers. It's just maybe there's maybe it's not just one event, but there's multiple ways for your for your families to engage and, and other stakeholders to engage over the month of October. So maybe it's uh, one day one day a week in the month of October leading up to something that's a little more um, elaborate on lights on after school day. Um, but it, for us, we chose to to uh, to do a challenge, a lights on after school challenge that took place the whole week of leading up to the Friday lights on after school. Um, so I, if you go ahead to the next slide, I'm gonna show you our lights on after school challenge. So we, we created um, this challenge in order to highlight every, um, I guess, special thing about our program. So we decided to each day highlight a different program component. So on Monday, we focused on literacy. On Tuesday, we focused on math. Wednesday, we focused on our community service activities, which is um, something that our students um, take part of every other week. And um, Thursday, just general, like what do you love about Beyond School? And then Friday, we highlighted um, our commitment to bringing uh, quality enrichment experiences to our students. So every day we had a different activity. And in this case, they were, they were all virtual because we were virtual last year at this time. And so we had a different activity each day and a different way for our students to engage. And not only our students, also our families and parents and our school partners to engage. And so if you flip to the next slide, I'll show you a little bit more detail about each of these challenges. So we had student challenges, and then we also had family and school staff challenges. And um, each day, this was the flyer that we handed out to our families um, to, to show them exactly what each day involved. So Monday for literacy, our students, we used Flipgrid. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Flipgrid, but if you're not, I can chat with you later about it, but it's a great online tool to create video snippets. So you can ask a question and then students can respond to that question in a video format. So we just had our students think of either talk about their favorite book on the video or some of them even dress up as their favorite characters. Um, and, and that was really cool to compile all those videos and see them. On um, Tuesday, we had a math activity where students um, you did a perimeter activity of something in their house and they, and they turned that into us. Um, our Wednesday community service activity also um, was ha it, it had to do with another event that we have each year here um, at Mission St. Louis, which is called Affordable Christmas, in which we um, have families come in and shop for gifts for their families at very discounted rates for gifts for their kids for for Christmas. And so our students engage every year in that by creating these ornaments that are homemade each year, they're different. And so they they actually make the ornaments and then we hand them out. And so the students actually, we had virtual sessions where we talked, we showed the students how to make the videos, or I'm sorry, make the ornaments. And then they each made them and sent them back to us so that we could use them for the affordable Christmas event. Um, and then Thursday, they did another flip grip where they uh, just talked about Beyond School and why Beyond School is important to them and why they love Beyond School. Um, and then they, we also had some bonus activities through it, throughout there that were um, like creating their creating a pumpkin um, and then the lights on after school light bulb. And so all of those challenges, every challenge that a student completed, they had proof. And then we entered them into a drawing, which is my next, which is another point is get creative and use some incentives as well to, to um, up your engagement. So every time the students uh, participated in one of the challenges, we put their another, an, their name into a drawing. And then at the end of the week, we drew um, for that student to be able to get um, a gift card. Um, the families, we just had them engage by doing that Flipgrid video of why they love Beyond School and the same way for the school staff challenge. Um, they were able to do that. And once again, we incentivize that by every, every family member and every teacher who um, created a video, we put their name in a hat and then drew for another uh, gift card for them. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, next, I want to talk to you a little bit about communication planning, because as you can imagine, there's a lot of communication that goes on 
to make something like this happen. So um, what I what I would suggest is just take the time um, before that week, well before that week, to just plan out the communications to make it as easy as possible on your team um, and all the team who is actually going, going to be running frontline on those communications. So if you flip to the next slide, I'll show you a sample of our communication plan for this. So we basically took each day and each challenge and we, we put who was responsible, what the links were, um, what the exact wording is that they needed to use if they were sending a text message or a, an email. Um, but this just made it so much easier on each of our frontline team members who were actually sending out the communications to, um, to not have to spend a lot of time thinking through what to say or what information to give. It was just all uniform and they were able to just really quickly copy and paste that into their phone for their text message or copy and paste it into their email. If you keep going on to the next one, there's a few more samples of, of this plan. So Thursday and we had on Thursday there there was the we had students and parents and school staff. So making sure that we had different verbiage and wording for each of those um, each of those uh, stakeholders. And then the last day, um, you know, we have all the, the bonus activities and other kinds of emails um, and communications. And then a last call email. So like get everything in because we're gonna do the drawing. So you wanna get your, you wanna get your name in there as many times as possible. Next slide. Um, and the materials and incentives, I kind of talked through incentives, but there are creative ways that you can incentivize participation too that don't have to be gift cards. Um, but I will say that, you know, families do do love those kinds of things too. So um, if there's and if you have that in your budget to be able to provide that, maybe you can tap into some community resources and get some gift cards from from um, businesses uh, that that they might be willing to donate. That would be that that would be a good idea too to even um, alleviate some of the costs for that. Um, and, and materials wise, as you can see, there were a lot of different uh, materials that we gathered for that. And what we ended up doing is creating a, a lights on after school kit for each one of our students and families. And then we arranged either a delivery of the of those materials so that every single student could participate um, or their families were able to come and pick it up. Um, and then last but not least, share and promote. We've talked about this, um, but um, one of the really cool things about, about last year doing these, these videos and having all these um, more like digital touch points or digital uh, proofs of each, each one of these challenges was that it gave us a whole lot of content. And this content is so valuable in so many ways to get your, to get, um, your program out there on social media. So we took a lot of the pictures and videos and just did snippets of, of um, throughout the week um, of families and students um, and, and the different challenges that they completed. Um, we also took a compilation of all the videos and photos and made one larger uh, video to share with stakeholders and even family members that, that um, just to get to, to share all the different things that families um, and students did. And then um, also I, I ended up taking that same video later on in the year um, in, in March, I had a, uh, I led a policy uh, round table discussion in which we invited local and state officials um, to come and talk about the state of after school and the importance of after school and basically um, just, a, just a really great opportunity to to share our program, but then also talk about the future of after school and the importance of after school. And what I ended up doing is at the end of that um, round table, I, sh I shared uh, a section of that video so that even those, those policymakers could, could see, um, you know, they couldn't be there right with the students right then, but they could see the, the impact that um, after school was having on our students by being able to share that. So use that, use your, your lights on after school, um, um, I guess any kind of videos and such that you collect, use those throughout the rest of the year to really continue to promote your program. Um, and that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. I'm gonna pass it on to Charlotte. That's the tea. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erin. That was really fantastic. Um, and I love, love, love the wonderful uh, presentation about the communications plan because that is what I'm here to share with you all today. Um, so 
I have seen in the chat that everyone is uh, very excited about um, celebrating either a first year or maybe a few years in. This is now going to be my fifth Lights On After School. And it is also the fifth anniversary of uh, some of our social media challenges and strategies that we've been using um, for, uh, for obviously the past five years. So the first point that I want to hit is that social media can be really critical, not only for promotion of your event, but as a way for programs to uh, make their events a little bit hybrid if they're perhaps doing something completely online or if they're doing something in person. By posting videos and photos of student activities on social media, you're also uh, connecting people who may not be able to attend the event in person to your event during the day. Um, it also, of course, provides a wonderful reminder as you look back uh, in a couple of days or possibly weeks to, to see what has been done um, during a rather unusual year to celebrate your program and your staff and, and the kids that you, you serve every day. So this is also a great opportunity to um, share stories of students and families, uh, to communicate uh, the importance of the program and how you are supporting these kids and, and supporting uh, working parents everywhere uh, as they, they navigate these times and to um, elevate the, uh, the work that your staff is doing and make sure that that is really prominent and placed in front of people who are concerned about issues relating to kids, relating to education. So the one hashtag that I really want you to remember uh, out of this is lights on after school. We at the After School Alliance will be keeping an eye on that hashtag all the way through probably late November, realistically. Um, and we would love to see your posts on that, um, excuse me, on that hashtag on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram, because uh, we will certainly be sharing and retweeting uh, everything that we can find um, that pertains to some of these wonderful events that, uh, that have been discussed today. We go to the next slide, please. All right, so this is the challenge I alluded to earlier. It is the fifth year of the light bulb challenge. Uh, I think everyone on this call has now seen a couple of times this cute little logo uh, that is uh, <laughs> everywhere, um, but it is, a, it is a stylized version of a child with their arms up in celebration. So we encourage everyone to take part in the light bulb challenge to strike the, the lights on after school pose and share it on social media. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are uh, <laughs> plenty of different uh, opportunities to get a group or even just one or two people together and celebrate this way. Uh, I would strongly recommend this if you are absolutely slammed during this busy season and you need the quickest, fastest, easiest way to participate in Lights On After School, please join us for the light bulb challenge. We uh, search under that hashtag, light bulb challenge, uh, and we'll be keeping an eye out for anyone who participates this year. Can you go to the next slide, please? We also have a couple of Instagram filters to make things fun. Uh, if you are taking one of those selfies, um, these filters are available on our social media kit. I believe that that's been popped into the uh, chat box right here. So please feel free if you can access that, um, that page on your phone, it'll take you right to uh, the spot where you can download those Instagram filters and, and use them at will. We have three really fun ones that were all developed by an after school program for our 20th anniversary of Lights on After School. And it's so exciting to see how more and more people are picking it up every year. Um, they are extremely cute and we would love to see you use them uh, during your own celebrations. Uh, could we go to the next slide, please? So uh, as in the chat box, I'll just mention that we have all of our social media tools available for you on 3to6.co slash lights on social. Uh, we have sample social media ready to go for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We have a whole lot of gorgeous social media graphics that are available. Please spread them far and wide. Uh, we would love to see them out in the wild on social media. And I will also mention, I saw one interesting question in the Q&A that mentioned, uh, do we have poster templates? I would recommend either uh, taking a look at the graphics section of this social media kit, or you can always visit the uh, graphics art and swag section of our website where you will find some wonderful uh, graphics of the 
the Lights on After School 2021 poster, which was designed by um, Sean Gray and uses a mix of both uh, photos of kids as well as some really incredible kid artwork to showcase everything that's going on in after school programs right now. Uh, could we go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, so this just about wraps up my portion of this presentation. Um, please do let us know uh, what your plans are. We would love to hear them. You can always register uh, online at lights on after uh, at our uh, at 36.co slash lights on. Um, and we will be keeping an eye out for you on the uh, World Wide Web. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And I think with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Tiana. Awesome, thank you so much, Charlotte. And uh, thank you all for attending our event today. So we have less than 15 minutes or so for question and answer. And before we get to that, I just wanna thank my colleagues at the Apple School Alliance. They have been great answering questions throughout our chat box. Um, so kudos to you all for doing that throughout the presentation. I see we do have one question. And so this question actually will go out to our panelists and to you all. So someone asks, uh, what are some activities and events that individuals in this meeting have done? So whether you wanna answer that question in the chat box, um, panelists, if you wanna come off mute and answer that question, um, this, this person is just looking for some activities and events <laughs> uh, to cover. So um, feel free and titties to engage in the chat box or if any one of our panelists would like to answer that question, we do have a few minutes. So activities wise, you're looking, um, I mean, we've been talking about a lot of different things that you could do. I would say, um, you know, just try starting either an open house. An open house is just simply setting up a table in front of your school or your, if you're at a Y or some kind of after school offside of a school and, you know, just strategically place um, some wonderful things that the students have done, including things from your toolbox and just open it up and stand out there as your campus leader, have your student ambassadors out there. I also have student ambassadors, have them talk about what they did, have one or two that are fairly well-spoken kind of explain the whole purpose of Lights On and um, you know, just hold some light, light bulbs up or some flashlights and make it fun. We always, get, um, we always get those glow sticks and we hand those out or we have them with the students. So just you know, very simple, just start off very simple. I told them when I heard um, Johanna talk about lights, flights, and frights, um, she better copyright that because someone's going to steal <laughs> that idea so she can make royalties on it. But I, it reminded me that one of the first years that we did Lights On, we, we did it around a fall festival. So we did it since it was close enough to Halloween, then we made it a family fall festival event. And we then used partnerships within the community um, to bring some of, the, some of those things that make that fun, um, such as inflatables and different things like that. So again, uh, trying to make sure that you, whatever you do, think about how you can bring the community together around that. Because again, the whole point of this, when we talk about lights on, putting a spotlight on after school, and it's still about awareness. It's raising the awareness of the amazing value of what we bring to the table in our community to support students and their academic and achievement enrichment, supporting that as well as supporting families. And I just think that's the big key. That's the whole goal here is to show the community, the value of what we bring to the table in our after school programs. And I see, uh, Mark, I see uh, Susan, Susan Harder said a talent show, and that's a great idea, but it doesn't have to be that complicated, guys. Your kids are already doing things. They might be doing drum fit. They might be doing basketball. I've had my kids demonstrate basketball moves for lights on, um, dance moves, whatever they're doing in your program, that's the talent. You don't have to create something new for Lights On. Show them what you're already doing because you're already doing amazing things. If, the, if you're into art, set up some easels and have them sit at the front of the entrance to your school or building and have them paint while parents are coming in. I mean, that's exciting and that's, that's very valid and it's authentic to what you do every day. Perfect, thank you so much for answering that question. 
So we had another one come through, which um, can go to anyone that has experience with lighting up a building. So the question reads, um, who has been involved with lighting up their city landmark and what kind of costs are associated with this? I'll, I'll answer um, on behalf of a few folks, but really I, you, typically there's not a cost, it's typically timing. And so if you can make sure that whatever that landmark might be in your community, you go to that, to that uh, entity that may be in charge of it. If it's a county courthouse, you go to the county courthouse and you talk to um, the commissioners or whomever that might be, and they may put you to somebody else. You know, we've been trying to get our capital building in Jefferson City lit up, and we're going to keep working on that. But we just happen to run into the person that's in charge of that. And we got a little bit more of an explanation as to how that can happen. So it really is around that and finding out who, who those um, people are that are responsible. Typically, what we have discovered, there's no charge for these kinds of things, but you'll find that out when you find out who the person is that can help you in that process. I can also um, add a little bit of uh, a little bit to that. If you find that maybe there isn't a particular um, landmark in your area, or maybe um, the timing is is just not right this year, I am also a big fan of going in the opposite direction with it and making the facility that you are providing these programs in your landmark with a projector, a couple of flashlights, maybe um, even a lantern lighting, something to communicate. Not only, of course, that you're lighting up the uh, the night, but also that this is uh, that the work that you're doing here is important and deserves to be recognized in its own way. So, I, I am a big fan of fountains and bridges and and gorgeous things being lit up. But also think about what you can do to to make uh, a, a shine a spotlight on your own program this year. Awesome! Thank you so much for that answer. And these next two questions, I believe we answered it, but we're just gonna recap it just for our audience here. Um, one question that we have, do you have social media poster templates available for download for event promotion, maybe on Canva question mark? I'll jump in again. Um, so Canva, no, but we're, that's such a good idea that I'm sure we're gonna take it back to um, our team and talk it through a little bit. Um, for the moment, as I alluded to earlier, we have those Instagram filters. I would definitely recommend using them. There are all sorts of fun ones. Um, we have graphics and the Lights On After School poster itself available on um, our website under the graphics and swag uh, section. And I would also say, if you have registered your program, you will be receiving 10 free posters in the mail in the very near future. So everything poster related you could possibly want, um, we will help make it happen for you. I wanna to add too that I know we um, we always wanna make sure Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is involved, but if, if you have a LinkedIn account, again, I'm always looking at how can I get the whole community involved and specifically those stakeholders that Aaron talks about, those community partners, put things on your personal LinkedIn because that will draw those eyes and specifically those people that wanna ask questions and how they might be able to uh, participate, invest in. That's the key. We're trying to find that those next partners that whether that they come and provide programming or they provide the actual cash resources to make sure your program continues to thrive and, and, and be able to move forward. That's so clever, adding LinkedIn to it. That was a great suggestion, Mark. Another question, speaking of registering for Light Sun at the school, just to recap, to register for Light Sun at the school, do we need to be with an ACE 21 Century program? Not at all. Uh, Lights on After School is open for everyone. Uh, it is also, I should mention, 100% free to register. Um, you receive some emails from us uh, and some planning tips. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's it's really off, open to anything that you would like to do. Um, the only major criteria I would say is that it's probably best if you uh, either run or work in an after school program so that uh, the information that we are providing for you during this uh, lights on season is uh, as relevant as possible to what you may be doing. Um, but we welcome everyone. We, we hope uh, to see participation from even folks who maybe are not themselves involved in the lights on app, in the, in, pardon me, in the after school space per se. And in, in the past, when we've done our rallies, we invite all after school folks from our town. At one point, we did have a YMCA and a Boys and Girls Club. 
we invite private organizations because it's not about any one after school entity. It's about getting positive mes message out for all after school programs and be very inclusive and you'll get more people that way. Perfect, thank you so much. So we're starting to wrap up and we're gonna ask, I'm gonna ask one more question as a good finale to end this session. So for our first timers, we had a couple of first timers that were shouted out in the chat. Um, so what are some tips for programs that are just getting started? So I guess, you know, to our panelists and Charlotte, if you want to add as well, what are some good tips for those first time programs that want to get started with Lights On? I think, uh, I think Johanna actually had some really great tips that, uh, that to address that and that it does not have to be this ground breaking major event, it can be something that you start with that's relatively small and then build up to something larger. Um, and I think that you you can start you can start with just, you know, the something during pickup, something, you know, that that's highlighting your students um, and, and whatever special things that you're doing in your program. Um, but it does not have to be some major event in which you have a congressman coming in. A, you can work up to that. So start small. Um, and then I'd say after every after every event or every activity that you have, reflect and think about ways that you can can potentially grow it in the following year. I would say if you're gonna oh go ahead, Johanna, you go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna piggyback off that. If you start small and you keep it authentic, you're just naturally gonna build on that from year to year. And it's gonna be so much of a better program because it's gonna reflect what you do in your community for after school. Then if you try to do something humongously big, that's not true to you. That's what I was gonna add. And I, all of that, what these ladies just said is perfect. One element I would add, just because it will begin that connection to your community, regardless of the size of your community, invite your mayor or your city manager or a city council person, the person that is representing the, the, where your program is, is located, because that will begin to build that bridge out if you're brand new starting this process and it raises that awareness and they recognize then the value of what you're bringing to their community and or our community as you will do that. And, and you, you see that, um, that embrace that happens. Awesome. Thank you. So, oh, Charlotte, do you want to join in? Sure. I guess I had just one small thought and it goes along with what Mark has has said. Um, if you want to get the word out and to connect with a mayor city council member uh, in one fell swoop, we have a, a proclamation template on our website, which you can use to uh, and uh, see if you can announce lights on after school day in your community. Um, it's a wonderful way to, to have after school uh, programs acknowledged around this time of year, as well as get it in the official record. Um, if you need that link, I will put it into the chat box right now. But I, I appreciate so much the, the insights from our, our panelists today. And just to echo what everyone has said, this is supposed to be fun. Like remember, step three, celebrate. <laughs> Please do not stress out about planning an event. Uh, we all understand, you know, capacity is limited these days when it comes to trying to operate a program and do a lot of things within your program. So please do what you can handle, but remember to have fun. Make sure your kids are having fun. Make sure your community members are into the fun. So please do not stress, do what you can handle. And with that being said, thank you so much for attending our session today. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you all for being here. And thank you to the After School Alliance for answering our questions as we were going along today. And we look forward to seeing how you turn your lights on. Have a great day, everybody.